I also just started the recording of this just to let everybody know this session will be recorded. And for those of you just coming in, I am going to go ahead and put the bit.ly in the chat so that you can go ahead and <clears throat> grab a copy of the slides. We will get started in just a moment right at 1230. Okay, for those of you coming in, we're going to wait and get started right at 1230. I'm going to go ahead and put the bit.ly in the chat. This will allow you to easily access the slides if you have not already um, accessed them in PowerSchool. You really won't need the slides until we have some plurn time. I like to say plurn equals play plus learn.
<coughs> we'll get started in just a couple of minutes. For those of you who have just joined, I'm going to put a bit.ly so you can grab a copy of the slides. Again, you won't need those slides um, until our plurn time, but I do have um, that link posted um, as we get into the content of the session. Okay, I have 12.30 right on the dot, so welcome. This session is entitled, We're Going on a Virtual Field Trip. My name is Leslie Pope, and I will be your host today. Um, if you see me ever looking away from the screen, I promise you it's not because I'm being inattentive. I have two monitors going, and so I'll be looking at the chat if you see me look away. Please feel free to use the chat um, as a way to communicate and participate, but also remember you can use your microphone as well. Um, we will be having some plurn time and uh, that's just play plus learn because I'm going to give you a lot of information and I also want you to have the opportunity to be able to explore on your own. I don't want to have to read everything to you, but give you that opportunity on your own. So um, I'm sure you have heard this if you've been attending sessions this morning. You're going to hear it from me as well. Please make sure that at some point um, before the end of the day that you do download the Performance Matter app. Um, at the end, I will share a QR code. Uh, please don't ask me to move it before then. Um, I am planning to present um, right up to close to the time to get out. Um, attendance is going to be recorded in Nesis, uh, which is the PowerSchool app that DPI is running everything through. And uh, when you download the performance app, it does ask for a reg registration code, which can be found down in the bottom right hand corner. Just a little bit about me, and I used some um, of Slides Mania to do this presentation. I have done this at the school level and also at the district level. I am an instructional technology facilitator with Franklin County Schools. So I serve three different schools, two elementary and one middle school. Um, and as you can see from my tag, um, I ask often, can you see my screen? Can you hear me okay? <laughs> Uh, sorry, I was in mute. Um, and then one of my favorite sayings is, all who wander are not lost. Sometimes I get accused of being a wanderer <laughs> because of my different roles in education. The biggest role that I have played and the most experience that I have has been as a classroom teacher. I've taught grades two through six. I've been an instructional coach. Um, a K-4 STEAM specialist, uh, a media coordinator. We call them digital literacy coaches in my district. Right now I serve as an ITF, again, serving three schools. I'm a Google certified trainer and over the past four years, I have done some contract work with DPI. That includes being a content ambassador for Go Open and being a digital learning competency ambassador. I was a part of the infamous NCDLCN 
through Friday Institute. They have not had that in a couple years. I hope they will be able to uh, bring that back because um, <laughs> that gave me the confidence that I have today to be able to share the information that and my knowledge with all of you. We do our family. I have 13 year old triplets. Um, my husband works for the Raleigh Fire Department and uh, we foster pugs. So these are two of our foster failures who we adopted, who are now ours, Puggles and Blondie. Um, so that's just a little bit about me, um, just to try to make a connection with you. <clears throat> so again, if you would like to access the slides, the bit.ly is bit.ly forward slash uh, VFT for virtual field trips, NC Bold. They are all capital letters. Um, so please uh, note that Bitly is case sensitive, so you would need to use all capital letters. Okay, so in the chat, since we're going on a virtual field trip, type the number of where you'd like to be right now. Would you like to be in number one, two, four, three? Okay, so I see lots of ones, a couple twos sprinkled in. I think I see more threes than twos. <clears throat> um, definitely right now, I would like to be number one <laughs> in that area because that just looks totally re relaxing. I'm a 12-month employee, so whew, I could use that downtime before um, everything starts back up. <laughs> All of the pictures I want to make a note of are free to use with no copyright infringement. I found them on Unsplash, so that's a great source to go to if you are looking for photos to use. I've got my kayak in my truck. <laughs> I'm with you there. <clears throat> okay, so how are we going to explore the virtual field trips? So you're not going to see me stay in uh, presentation mode the whole time because um, I actually had to go back to grad school this year to get my add-on graduate certification to be an ITF. And I had to do some projects that actually worked in my favor. I think it, it has made me a better presenter as a result. Um, Wakelet is just a, it's an easy way to capture, organize, and share resources. You can share them with students, with teachers, and learning communities. I did give you a link that if you wanted to during your plurm time, you can check out Wakelet if you are already, um, if you are not already familiar with it. But in order to access um, my Wakelet, I have a link here. You do not have to click on that. You can just watch me go through that and go back and explore it on your own. Um, I'm just gonna give it a minute to load. But this is where I house all the field trips for uh, the virtual field trips. Now I am, and it's, it's still, okay, good, it's loading. I am not one of those, those people that want to show you 180 different virtual field trips. Um, I just focused on a few that I thought would be helpful for you that I had not really explored before and I didn't realize the possibilities. So I'm going to do most of my work right through Wakelet and the first virtual field trip that you can take is Are We There Yet? So Are We There Yet series actually used to be on National Geographic and it, it had its own uh, page and everything where all the videos there were listed. Um, they actually did this in um, collaboration with Sinking Ship Entertainment. So I guess Sinking Ship Entertainment has kind of taken it back and it is no longer on National Geographic, but it is here. I've linked this website. Um, you can see that there's a gallery of photos that show you where all of these young kids go. Um, so they're ages six through eight, so definitely geared towards your more younger kids. While it says four to seven year olds, I am not afraid to still show it to fourth and fifth graders. Um, 
but it just gives kind of a kid view of different places around the world that they explore. So I just want to give you, just want to show you just a minute or two of this video clip so you get a sense of what it's about. So that just gives you just a little clip to kind of show you what Are We There Yet uh, um, is. And I am going to show you the way that you can integrate that into uh, Google Earth towards the end. So stick with me. There's more on Are We There Yet? Google Arts and Culture is up and coming. A lot of people don't even know about Google Arts and Culture, but it is through Google. And one of the reasons why Google Arts and Culture is up and coming is because I'm not sure if you realize that they did away with Google Expeditions. So what they have done is they have chosen as of right now to put some of those expeditions on um, the arts and cultures um, page here. And so you can totally explore different places around the world. So if we wanted to go here in Paris, then we're going to have the opportunity to still be able to explore. We can explore with the arrows depending on where you want your arrows to go. You can totally zoom in on features and zoom out, you can take a look at different aspects. And again, you can follow the arrows. The arrows just kind of give you a closer view of everything. Um, so it's kind of cool that you can still go in and you can still experience um, some of the VR experiences. You can totally play on the app with some of the features that they have with art transfer and find your art selfie. You can see here, these are today's top picks. Let's just say we wanna swim with sharks since Shark Week just um, was, I believe it was last week or the week before last. And so you just take a journey. It gives you um, some background information. And I love it because if you let it go still, it gives you a panoramic panoramic view of everything um, and gives you some background information. You can choose for this to be independent, um, something independent that you allow your kids um, to do, or it can be something that you guide them through. Um, so that's totally up to you, but definitely wanted um, you to see what that looks like. Okay, so if we keep scrolling down, you're going to see that it just keeps going and going and going. So there's art, there's games, there's more. You can take a picture here. Here you're exploring an art filter. Um, you can see what type of artwork looks like you. It's kind of a simulator. So students can get in here and they can really do a deep dive. Art teachers would be blown away by this. So please, um, if you haven't heard of Google Arts and Culture, please share that with um, your art teachers especially. So you got a favorite color, you wanna see different artworks by color, let's just say I choose purple. Then this is, and it gives you badges, that can drive you kind of crazy, but um, it gives you badges as you go along. See, it, it wants to blow up my badges right now. <laughs> but you see the different pieces of artwork, you can click on them, 
and you can do a deeper dive into the artwork. You can zoom, okay, and it's going to give you different um, pieces of artwork that you can go through. Now, I just like to use, you can see here, you can explore, you can look at what's nearby, you have collections, you have themes, you have historical events. So, um, I'm just going to show you how it just keeps going. Expeditions around the world. So here's your expeditions piece where you're joining virtual field trips. Now it doesn't have the guide like expeditions had where the kids were seeing one thing, but the teacher had the information to read to help guide the field trip. Now it just has everything there. So you can assign it to the students without having to actually read everything to them. Or if they are your younger students, you could even record a video um, using Screencastify or Loom about the expedition. So here you see that it's places, museums, and games. There are arts and crafts, fruits, you just can go on and on and on. So really the possibilities are endless and a lot of people don't realize how in depth it is because they don't keep scrolling. And if you just keep scrolling, you find more and more that you can use it for. If you want to, you can just explore. It gives you different categories that you can explore. And again, it just keeps going and going. There are different options of play that you can use. So if you definitely know this is where you want to come, you can do that. I love the puzzle party option that lets you put pieces of, uh, uh, pieces of art together in a puzzle form. So that is arts and culture. It is geared for grades second through 12th grade. Of course, if you wanted to use it with kindergarten and first grade, you would just have to, you know, cater it to their learning styles. And then this particular person pulled out pieces of arts and culture, because if you're that person who's like, I don't have time to sit and explore this forever, <clears throat> this particular teacher pulled out history lessons ideas. And so they're already hyperlinked. All you have to do is click on them. One of the ones that I explored was Ford's Theater, because of course you can use that with the younger kids talking about President's Day, or it could be a novel study that you're doing about presidents or Abraham Lincoln. Um, there are stories and online exhibits that you can go to. It gives you different pieces of collections. It shows you all the items, and then it allows you to explore the actual Ford Theater, which is located in D.C. It gives you a Google map so you can see exactly where it is located. Um, so this is one of those things, okay, so you can't take a field trip to D.C. And we know last year it was like everything was canceled with field trips. Um, so this is just a great opportunity to let them be able to explore what it really looks like inside. So you have your arrows that you can use um, to walk towards items. Or you can focus on a particular item. It allows you to focus. I'm going to go back here. It allows you to go to different places in the museum. And what I love about it is those arrows take you to the different places. So you're able to see um, different aspects of it and you have your arrows. So if that's something you really wanted to focus in on and read, you actually could zoom in and read it. So it's really neat that it has those features. It takes a little bit depending on what device you use at least for me, it's a little bit of a learning curve trying to get around to everything until you get the hang of whatever particular mouse that you are using. Um, again, different pieces. Um, they sketch the scene of the assassination and 
where um, they were standing. And so it's just, it's interesting to just get in there, find one particular thing that you like and explore that. But I loved that it gave, it took me automatically there because if I wasn't just exploring, if I was just exploring Ford's Theater, maybe something that I completely missed. So arts and culture, it's free. And it's just a great way to kind of amp up your K-5 curriculum, curriculum, especially with uh art, history, science, and all of those expeditions that are there. So Google admits right now arts and culture is up and coming, and they've tried their best to merge all of the expeditions on Google Arts and Culture, but of course that's going to be time consuming, and some people may not like the quality of it just yet, but it is a work in progress. One of my favorite ways to take a virtual field trip is to go into Google Earth. Some days are better than others about letting Google Earth load. You can see today it's taking a little bit more time to load Google Earth, but once it loads, I'm going to show you some features that you can use. Google Earth can also be very intimidating because here is Google Earth. Um, I can zoom out if I want to. I can see different aspects. I can literally just point somewhere and I can fly to that location. Let's just say we want to go into South Carolina. If I wanted to build a project, it would allow me to go ahead and start adding things to my project. I will go through all of that with you step by step and show you what I have done. Um, I love the walking man. The walking man um, gives you a street view. So all of the places in blue, you can have your walking man go to. I'm just choosing a place in North Carolina. It's taking me there and oh, love it. I love the ocean. I love the water. So it took me someplace right at the water and you can see what is there in street view. If you wanted to fly back to your location, you can hit the little button over on the right hand side and it flies you right back to where you are located. So the kids really love that and they're able to get some perspective about the whole earth right at their fingertips. They're not looking at a flat map. They're actually getting to play around with things. Now over here on the left hand side, this is kind of your guide. So if there is, if you are creating a project, which I did for fourth graders, um, I will show you that. In just a minute, I could do a specific search and start my project there. Or if I just wanted to see where something was located, I can use Google Earth to do that. Um, here you have your Voyager. When I was um, really taking a deeper dive into Google Earth, I love that they have, um, they have virtual field trips already set up for you. You can follow the Tokyo 2020 um, Olympics, you're here, you're looking at Canada, Canada's national parks, has so many places for you to explore. Now, I'm going to be honest here, when I first um, started exploring this in depth, I got totally wrapped up in, um, and I can't remember the exact name of the tour, Halloween locations. And that, that's actually taking me to, <laughs> to the stores of Halloween, to the places. But if I went into Voyager, and if you just wanted to do a search for Halloween locations, there is a Voyager that will come up that takes you to all the scary movie locations. 
And so I got really hung up in that. And it was funny because someone knocked on my door and I about jumped out of my skin with that um, because I was reading everything and like, oh, my word, these are the exact locations. So that was uh, very interesting. Here I'm feeling lucky. That's kind of like a roll of the dice. So it's just going to take you somewhere. Now, here we are in India at a national park. And I love it because it's going to go ahead and give you information about that national park. And if you are creating a project, you could add what has already been created about this. If you were researching India, you could add that to your project. So I love how it just kind of takes you there and it gives you um, information and different hyperlinks, different photos. And so basically within a couple of seconds, you're able to travel anywhere in the world. So that is what I'm feeling lucky is about. And then here are projects listed. So you can see that I have created a couple of projects. Um, in a little bit, I will get to Christmas Around the World that I did with kindergarten and show you how Are We There Yet tied into that. Um, I also, this is an older book, but it's set in the Outer Banks of North Carolina. I created a Google Earth adventure. So as students were reading the book, they could explore the different places um, that the students were going to. Now, Google Lit Trips. You either know about this or you don't know about this. Google Lit Trips, I will say it's not um, affiliated with Google, so it's not a part of Google. Um, it's a nonprofit organization that some people put together, but it works with uh, Google Earth. And so literally what you're doing is you're looking at different titles they have them listed by grade level band. So let's just take a look at K-5 titles. So if you scroll down, it shows you all of the different books that have been created in conjunction with Google Earth. And so all the places that the characters travel to, you get to experience it. So it's engaging, it's relevant, it's interesting, and it's just a piece of literature that um, it keeps things engaging because sometimes kids, they lose focus when they're reading or they struggle with reading. And to me, Google Lit Trips just really um, solidifies their engagement and helps them understand where all of the locations are. So as I, um, and I don't want to give you learn time just yet. So I want to show you a Google Lit Trip novel example with Bud Not Buddy. So with Google Lit Trips, you, it's free. You request the Google Lit Trip through email. And in my experience, within a couple of hours, they actually send you the Lit Trip. Once you have access to it, you always have access to it. Now, they do ask for donations, but that, again, is because it's, you know, not for profit. So they're trying to help the creators of the company out who have taken their time and volunteered to create the Google Lit Trips. So what do they look like? So here we are loading a Google Lit Trip that was specifically made for the novel Bud Not Buddy. And that is one of my favorite, I guess you could say, classics out there now. And it's getting ready to load. It's already been created. I do not have to do anything. Uh, notice it is in view only. And so anything that you create and share, you can make it in view only, just like you can with, with Google Docs. It gives you an explanation about the Google Lit Trip. So it pulls it up with the title of the book. It has, uh, you know, it's linked to information about the author and it tells you when it was last updated. And now when you read in the story, Bud Not Buddy, about the New York Stock Exchange, it actually takes you to the New York Stock Exchange on Google Earth. 
Okay, and I can use my little running man. to go in to New York City and see what the street view around Wall Street looks like, okay? And you can use the arrows and, uh, you know, you can zoom in, zoom out. You can travel to different places. Just remember um, over here on the right, that flies you back to the location that you are at. So if you um, wanna click off, of your little man it takes you back um, out of the the street view and so if you really want to see where the new york stock exchange is there it is and it has information on that if that was what you wanted to focus on and it gives you photos um, and pictures for that if we want to go to flint michigan there's not a whole lot going on in, in Flint, Michigan, but we can see where it is. Remember that we can zoom out. Um, we can zoom in or we can zoom out. We can go into street view by clicking on our little, um, I call it the street view man. It gives you information about Flint. It shows you different websites here. Um, you're seeing how the African Americans were particularly hard hit during the Great Depression. Um, it gives actual questions that the students can answer and it shows the sources of all the different types of media. So Bud Not Buddy is a great, you know, historical fiction book that is showing how things really were. And as you go on throughout the story, you're just seeing all the different places that were the settings. And you can totally X out of this if you want to. So that way you can see the street view here. And notice I have it on street view. So everywhere I go, it automatically zooms in to the street view if I click my little street view man. <clears throat> And anything that shows up, I meant to say, anything that shows up in the blue, that means that's a place where your, your little man can go. So that just shows you how a Google Lit Trip works. Now that is for a novel, right? So if I want to, I can use it with a picture book. And Flop Sam is a great picture book that has absolutely no words in it. So this Google Lit Trip is a great example to try to put the, the puzzle pieces together of what the story Flop Sam is about. When I looked at the pictures the first time, of course, you know, I'm taking, I'm like the kids, I'm taking a quick walk through it. <clears throat> I'm not really understanding things. And then when I did this Lit Trip, I got a really, um, I grasped a really better understanding of um, the story. So again, we let it load. And notice here, there it shows you all the different places that are traveled to. And it talks to you about the different photos. So the Japan photo of the girl, it says, when the boy at the beach discovered the camera, there were a series of fantastical pictures. The last picture revealed where the camera was before the boy received it. So we can actually go here. I'm going to close out of the, and we can see the picture in Flot Sam. I'm going to click on my little man. But we can see where the inspiration of that photo came from. Okay, and it gives you different aspects around there. I'm just zooming out so you can see. And then here with the octopus in Fiji, it shows you, let me go out of that. It shows you the location, which I love because it's showing you as it travels around the world with the story. 
And so you can zoom in, you can read the, the parts of the book, and it kind of puts everything together. So your skills and your strategies that you can work on with making predictions and inferencing with pictures is huge with flight sand. So don't think that Google Lit Trips is just for different novels. It's not. Um, it's actually for um, picture books as well. You just have to know the titles. Every book is not offered with Google Lit Trips. Um, it's just certain books. Number the Stars is another one that I absolutely love that had a great Google Lit Trip. And again, the point of these virtual field trips is a lot of our kids aren't able to travel, some of them not even outside of the, the city um, or the area that they live in. So it just gives that, um, gives you the opportunity to bring in that global piece to your classroom and gives them the opportunity to travel places where they would never even imagine traveling. And it gives them a better sense of the world and different cultures and religions in the world. So moving on to our virtual tour of the Smithsonian National Museum of History. Now, again, this is located in Washington. Of course, not everybody is going to be able to go to Washington. I know some fifth graders do, but what I love about the Smithsonian Museums is that they're free, but if you can't go to them, you can still bring them into your classroom. So you have access to different um, permanent exhibits or current exhibits or even past exhibits. So I'm just going to use um, the dinosaur exhibit and it actually pulls up what you see when you walk in to the Smithsonian National Museum of Natural History and um, it will allow you to go in. Uh, you can see you have your little map up here. So if you want to go to the fossil lab, it will take you to the fossil lab and you can go to, I'm just going to hide that so you can see, you can go to different places. So you can definitely zoom in if there's something in particular that you wanted to see. And it's great because it lets you zoom in to the point where you can read everything and see everything also. Um, it kind of shows you the different places that you can go. So if you want to see what's in the museum, and here we go, we have um, the not so distant past. And I can adjust this if I want to be able to read something and then zoom in on it. If I want to read familiar plants, I can do that. I'll take this off and zoom in so that I can read it. Depending on your eyesight, depends on how much you need to zoom in. So that's just a really neat feature of the Smithsonian Museum of Natural History. And also, no thanks to the feedback. There are virtual tour tips, so they give you tips. And if you go here under education, which I always explore those. Um, you can see that there are different webinar series and you can sign up for these webinars. So it's not something you can just click on and go to, but it is distance learning. And they're running these, um, they show you programs that they have done before. They show, and they have archives, so you can browse the video archives and you um, can have the opportunity to set those webinars up. They do those through Zoom. So if I go back out, um, they have online exhibits, they have webcast archives, they have teaching resources, and I'm gonna share a fabulous resource with you in just a minute. And then of course, resources for educate, educators. Um, where is our digital school programs? And you can actually go to um, the subject that you are interested. So for grades K through two, they have animal adaptations. Sometimes they align up with our, with our standards here in North Carolina. And so they show you the Zoom webinar. Um, they have 
how to register for that and supplemental um, videos. So their website is very good about having all of those different options. I love it because they do have lesson plans and I'm getting ready to show you one of those that I found. And it is a choice board. And again, all of, the, all of this can be located on the Wakelet that I included. And that's what I'm running everything off of. <clears throat> so what I love about the choice board it is in the form of a Google Doc, which I love. It gives you a technology key. So again, we're hoping to be face-to-face -face and be able to have a blend of this. So it shows you if it's paper and pencil, hands-on, if it involves printing something using a mobile device or a computer. The areas are um, science, social studies, cultures, and arts. And I love that it has... Um, the levels of complexity. So obviously the higher that you go up, the more um, depth and complex the activity is. So if I just click here, learn how um, American art can connect Arctic explorers, social burps and the civil war, I can click on that. And it's going to load, I'm going to continue to resource, and it's going to load everything for you. Okay, so once you enter in, then you're going to that resource. And over here you have options, different options of sharing, liking, giving comments. So the resources are nice. Everything is there. The students can choose what they want, or, of course, you can assign them. <clears throat> so um, it breaks it down into those social studies, the arts, and the science. A lot of times those are the resources that there's not enough of out there. And while this is broader, it's not directly related to North Carolina standards. I still think it is a great alternative. So if you go looking um, on the site under educators with resources, you'll find other choice boards. They started coming out um, with these whenever everyone went um, pretty much were virtual learners back in 2020. So now I'm at the Georgia Aquarium and I've always wanted to visit the Georgia Aquarium and my family and I finally got that experience this May because it is, um, I believe it is the largest aquarium in America and it has amazing resources. So I linked you straight to the educational resources and there are field guides. Now the field guides are great to use if you were taking a field trip there, right? Well, obviously Georgia's a long ways away. The chances of us taking a field trip there are slim. So there are animal guides, And so you can choose what you want to view. So if I want to view the African penguins, I can find out all kinds of resource, resource information on the African penguin here. So this is a great safe place to do some research. Um, and I love it because they have live webcams all throughout the aquarium. So if you want to see what the penguins are doing right now, here is a live webcam view. And the kids just think that is um, the bee's knees, so to speak. They also show you other webcams that they have. And it just keeps going on and on. So if the kids just want to take time to explore or you want to give them something specific to explore, then they are able to do that. So going back to the link that I originally shared with you, there are lesson plans for grades K through 12. So it's not just elementary, it's for all learners. And I love it because it specifically will give you sea lion lesson plans. And if you click 
The drop down, it will give you the lesson plan ideas and the grade level band. So let's take a look at K2, penguin life stages. There's something about those penguins that I just love. <clears throat> And so look at how awesome that lesson plan is. Now also look, if you have Cami, which that, that could be it's a whole nother PD, but if you have Cami, then you can open it up with Cami and of course make your annotations. You can allow, you know, uh, voice to text. It can read it to you. All of those uh, great features that Cami has, but these, have the essential questions, the vocabulary, materials of activities that you want to do here with the card game. And I love that it gives you everything in color. So for those of you that love printing in color or have that option to, um, it has everything right at your fingertips. So I thought that was a really good resource um, to link up if you need some lesson plans uh, ideas and that does run all the way through 12th grade. So going back, web resources. Um, it gives you all kinds of organizations. So if they are researching uh, sea turtles, they could go to automatically go to the Georgia Sea Turtle Center. Um, they have different learning labs that the students could go to and explore or that you could assign to them. So the Georgia Aquarium is something to definitely check out and keep in mind. Um, it's not something we would normally think about going to again because it is in Georgia. Want to throw that STEAM in. One of my other sessions that I'm doing today and tomorrow is on uh, STEAM or STEM. And so it talks about the career link and it has a um, STEM forward video series where it shows possible job opportunities that the kids could explore. Um, it has different episodes. You can drop down and see the episodes. If you're talking about water quality, you can check out the water quality and how they test that. And um, the, the different job opportunities that are there just um, within all of these episodes. So it's a great resource to check out. Um, my favorite probably is the Ocean Voyager live webcam. So if you click on that, you're gonna see the main live webcam. And again, this is really what's going on there right now. They do timed entrances right now to keep the crowds down, but they do almost always sell out. It is just an amazing place to go. But if you can't go, this is definitely the next best thing. So I encourage you to check that out. So you have seen my wakelet now. I'm going to go back to my plan time. Um, you've kind of gotten a sneak peek at several virtual field trips. It's not over. I haven't shown you everything yet, but I have talked. Um, too long probably. I want you to take the next 10 minutes to explore any of the resources or the links that I've given you in detail. Choose one um, and just be ready to share either in the Google chat or just let us have a conversation about how you would incorporate it in during the instructional day. So I'm going to be quiet and I'm going to let you explore Again, if you need a copy of the slides, it's down at the bottom of this particular slide, bit.ly forward slash VFT NC Bold.
Okay, you have about two and a half minutes left. Again, um, please share how you would incorporate this into your instructional day, either in the chat or when time is up, we can talk about it. You can take your um, self off mute and talk. Okay, so that's just a, a 10 minute online timer. I used one one time that had kind of like an alarm at the end and I think I scared everybody to death. So this one just was very gentle at the end. Okay, so let's look at the chat and see what everybody is saying. So um, Elizabeth would definitely use this in literature circle rotations. It's great to build contextual background that so many rural students have not been exposed to yet. Yes, absolutely. Um, Jennifer, like the lesson plans provided by the aquarium, um, doing a unit of study at the end of school on ocean animals. So that will provide them a lot of useful information. Um, Susan, you looked at the Google Earth projects and can see so many great things that you can do with the projects. Um, it's a great way to travel and really understand more about a subject. Okay. And then the Google Lit Trips were really good. Um, need to check out the titles. Definitely use those with your ELA units if it's free. Um, you know, why not at least try it with one and see how it goes. Google Voyager trips are neat. Um, Google Arts and Culture has access um, that she can use in her Latin classroom. So that's pretty cool. You got that um, global piece right there. Uh, Google Earth, uh, Teresa teaches IDD students and would able to literally show them how to find their way around the community to different places. That is amazing. Yes, I never thought about that use. Um, that's why I love to see how you guys would use um, resources that I share because everyone has so many different um, amazing ideas. And yes, Diana, it can be used with preschool. I always say that the, the littles can. A lot of people want to say the littles can't, but they actually can. And the younger that you teach them, uh, the better off they are because they're like little sponges. Um, explore art in the wit and wisdom ELA lessons. OK, 
Okay, so there's so, so many different possibilities with these. So thank you for taking the time to share. Again, these were the Google Lit um, examples. I have access to them. Um, if you weren't able to access them for any reason, all you have to do is go on the Google Lit website and email them for uh, access. Yes, junior beta students have an opportunity to explore the world beyond the county line. Absolutely. They're getting out there into the world without ever having to leave their school walls. Okay, so more uses and actual things that I have created. Now, you will have, you do, you will be able to use these, view them. You can recreate them. Um, I usually keep a Creative Commons lessons on all my presentations that says you can use it as long as you give me credit. You can't sell it. And that if you do... Um, share it with people or remix it and make it your own that you still keep the same attributions on it that I have on it. And there's a disclosure at the end that will explain that if you are not familiar with a Creative Commons license. Some of you create some amazing things, so I recommend that anything that you create, you always put a Creative Commons license on it. Otherwise, people are free to use it however they want, and you don't want your information getting shared in the wrong way. So Christmas around the world, we're coming back to, um, are we there yet? So at one of my schools, they were like, we want to do something different, you know, it, but it still has to be virtual because we're hybrid. Some of our kids are here. Some of them aren't. We love Christmas around the world, but how can we make this virtual? So um, I, I was like, of course, we're going to use Google Earth. Now, to me, once you get the hang of creating these, um, it's pretty easy. You know, you're adding the, 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 you add, literally go to the places that you want to go. So I focused on the capitals of different places. So for Australia, Sydney. So we're going to fly over here to Sydney, Australia. We get to see Sydney, Australia, and I'll X out of that in just a moment. Um, if you want the kids to be able to see the path of everywhere they travel to, it will automatically draw the lines and the shapes in there for you as it travels. Um, so that's another neat uh, feature. So these are actually everything that I put here is actually I made it, tried to make it as kid friendly as I could. Obviously, with kinders, you're using this, you're going to have to um, read the background information to them or make it even more engaging. So I tried to find really kid friendly photos about Christmas in Australia and what it looks like. And then here I have linked a Google um, Google Slides about Australia. that they can use um, where they can fly from the classroom to Australia and you can do that within Google Maps. Of course fly to your location and then say you want to go to uh, Sydney, Australia and then I just have information here about in kid-friendly terms about what happens in Australia and I also have um, and I give credit to first grade creative for these um, Google Slides, they're kind of like the little Bitmoji classrooms where you have videos, there are book suggestions, and then there are two additional videos um, that can be shown too, and all of it has to do with Christmas in Australia. So you have examples of food that they eat here and different artifacts that in the flag that represents everything in Australia. So then being able to see that, see videos, um, those links are pretty amazing. And then they can put together little books about the different places that they went when they were traveling around the world. So again, you have access to this and I went on, you know, it could, we can go on and on. So it's going from Australia and it shows you where India is. 
So again, I have the Google slide link that goes with it that's kid friendly. I just put some basic background information that the teacher can choose to share and I created my own videos. Now, how did I do that? You simply fly to the Capitol and when you click the edit button, it takes out everything that Google Earth has um, chosen for you and you get to um, insert all of the photos that you want to. You get to put all of the information that you want in there. You get to um, use your place marks how you want to, size and everything, how you want to set everything. I really didn't mess with the heading, the range, anything like that. Or you can reset it to default. So it's nice that you can make it your own. So again, if you wanted to edit the pictures, what I love about this, and this is what I did, I went straight to Google image search and search for photos of Christmas in India. And I selected them. You know, you don't run into copyright infringement um, issues with it. And it's just a nice place to go within Google Earth without ever having to leave and do research somewhere else. It's amazing. So that just shows you how to um, build it. You can add new features. If I wanted to add another place mark, I could. Um, if I wanted to draw the lines or shapes showing the path that we've been to, I could. And of course, you can put it on full screen. Um, so it's kind of cool to have all of that right there um, at your fingertips. Now I'm going to take a look at another one I created with the uh, novel Taffy of Tor Torpedo Junction. It's again, it's an older book set on the Outer Banks during World War II. Um, they actually use a lot of um, slang language, so to speak. But I thought it was cool because there wasn't one built. And she just wanted to make sure that all the different places that they went to that they had an opportunity to go visit on Google Earth because, again, a lot of our kids still haven't gone to the Outer Banks in North Carolina. So here is where it starts with Cape Hatteras Lighthouse. And I put in the information in Chapter 1, Taffy looks at the round wooden tower and curiosity and wonder takes over. She respects the no trespassing sign and carries on down the sandy trail. And so that could lead to um, conversations. You're working on your skills and your strategies. You're able to see exactly where everything is located. And then if you want to bring the all these places is where the walking man can go. You can go to different places. Right there at the lighthouse. So it shows you where the museum is. You can zoom in, you can zoom out. And if you want to explore something else, you just click on your little man. It shows you all the blue areas of different places you can go. Now check this out. I can even click inside of the lighthouse if I want to, and I can see different views from the lighthouse. So then they know what it's like to um, be at the lighthouse and actually have climbed in the lighthouse and what that look perspective looks like. Um, Rodanth, of course I love that movie Nights in Rodanth. I had to go see that house just to say I saw it. Um, but that is also mentioned in the book and I never knew right after Pearl Harbor was bombed, the old Christmas celebration was canceled in Rodanth. Um, and again, I showed the, the house that uh, kind of put Rodanth on the map and what it looks like. And you can go take a trip there. So you can see all of the places that they talked about. They talked about Europe, Germany, the Norfolk um, Naval Station. So they get to travel to all these places. And instead of having to imagine what it looks like, They've got it right there at their fingertips. And there's information. Um, there's links for more information. 
and you can create this and make it your own. Now, if you don't want to create it and you want to use the information that they have, that's fine. It's usually geared for older kids. That way, though, you really have to scale it down um, for the younger kids. But the younger kids can definitely explore it. So that just shows you um, how to use it on your own. Those are just a couple of the projects that I have come up with. Um, also with fourth grade, in the past, I have done um, a tour of all the North Carolina lighthouses. And for those of you with older students, let your kids, um, let your students uh, create their own journey. If they're going on a field trip, they want to get credit for the field trip, they're going on a field trip, going on a vacation, they want to get credit for it. Have them document through Google Earth all the places they went so they can come back and share it. Um, it's just really um, an amazing tool to be able to use. So definitely check out the examples here. I also have the coastal region um, of North Carolina. Um, I would give you more time to plan, but we are running low on time and I do not want to take that time away from you, although I think um, it would benefit you to do some more exploring. Excuse me, my timer wanted to go ahead and start. This is the creative, uh, the creative Commons license that I have on it. And again, it just basically says you can share it, give credit where credit is due. You can remix, transform, build upon it, um, and you can't sell it. And that little money sign right there means no selling. <laughs> and just if you remix it, circle back around and give credit where credit is due. If you want to learn more about Creative License, there is a link there that kind of explains everything to you. These are resources that I used, so feel free to check those out also. Again, Unsplash, great um, site for beautiful free images. Um, now, so do you share the Google Earth projects that you make with students to go through on their own? <clears throat> yes, so you can do that. So with the older kids, you can totally explain how Google Earth works and set them free. You can assign it in, uh, you know, Canvas or Google Classroom. You can assign it to them to do um, different things, or you can go through it with them step by step. The first one, maybe go through step by step and then allow them some freedom to be able to explore. Exploring is their most favorite thing in the world. So just like we like some plurn time, I like to give them plurn time too. So when they did the coastal region of North Carolina, some of them were, were like, well, you mentioned black beards. You didn't go into a lot of detail. So then they got to explore on their own um, about Blackbeard. And of course, they had search parameters like going through NCY's Owl <clears throat> or um, another site that I knew was appropriate. So we're coming to the end of the session, and I do want to give you an opportunity to be able to scan your um, section code so that you can sign in. This gave me a little trouble last time. I'm not, I'm just going to remove that green square, put that in present mode for you. Um, and also, I, um, you have a copy of this scan in. So if you want to wait and do this later, you can just come back to the slides and that code will be there to let you um, sign in. You filled in the missing links for me about how to use Google Earth better. Okay, awesome. And that was what I wanted to do. Thank you guys so much for coming and spending um, 80 minutes with me. I appreciate it. I hope you learned a lot. And or even if it was just a little bit, that was worth it. Sarah, you had a question? Sandra, I'm not sure um, you should be able to take your uh, your mobile phone, your mobile device. You should be able to put it on the camera and that will automatically take you where you need to go with the QR code. OK.
Let me see. Let me try. Okay. Yeah, it doesn't work. So what I will do is I will let Lauren and Brian know that it doesn't work. Um, but if you are having issues with it, there is an alternate attendance form down at the bottom, the bit.ly forward slash NC bold ALT ATT that you can fill out and you will still get credit for it. Okay, Colleen says you have to be in the app and you click scan the code and it says you've signed into this section. You actually have to go into the app. Ms. Pope, I was in a section this morning and we were having troubles in that section being able to scan. And so we had to use the external link to get attendance. Yeah, that's what I would so do. That might be what's happening. Yeah, I really wouldn't mess with the QR code if it's giving you trouble. I would just use the alternative form. Can you post the alternative attendance um, link in the chat so that we can click on it? Bit.ly, MC Bold. There you go. And thank you guys again so much for coming. And if you need me, you can always uh, find me at, um, at Miss Reads on Twitter.